So once again, we walk, walk through the things, the why, what is the problem we're trying to solve? Why is it important? Why is it urgent? Why is it desperate that we solve that problem? The what is what does it look like? We're walking into the future. What, what future do we want to see? That's the future state. So if you can't see it, you can't create it. And then we're going to go over to the how. How is that going to be done? Normally that's a combination of strategy, which is a methodology for solving a problem, and the plan, which is the detailed steps that go along with the methodology. And then the implement part, we talked about this this morning. We, it can't be we talked about it so much, we thought we had done it. There's a certain point when you actually have to do something. That's the bummer. <clears throat> actually do something. But then after you do it, then you come back around. It's a closed circle. It's a closed loop control cycle, if you want to put it that way. You go back now, did we get the why right? Is there, okay, we may have to tweak that. Did we get the what right? Did we get the how right? So it's interactive. So sort of one Japanese guy I worked with, he called it spiral up. You start small, like with a test tube, you try it out, does it work, does it not work, and you keep adjusting it, and you keep going up till you scale up. Most of us, and many times, we start with a big, full-blown plan, and it crashes magnificently in front of everybody, so it's not a good idea. So we always like to start with a skunk works project, do it quietly. If it works, tell people. If it doesn't work, it never happened. <laughs> So we walked through, I made this a lot simpler since this morning. It seemed like there was a, a red flag and a green flag. The red flag was the evangelical church is breaking apart, and we had all these reasons, these depressing reasons uh, <clears throat> that we went through. We don't need to reiterate those, but the long and short of it is we have, a, we have a problem. But the good news is this is the opportunity of our lifetime. Biggest problem, biggest opportunity. They go together. <clears throat> So that's good. If you want purpose, now's the time. So I think uh, Dave really teed this one up well. We want to say if we walk into the future and look at that future, it's like future memory, right? We've been there. We're looking at it. What do we want to see? And I love the way he pointed this out. Really, these four things. Do we see presence, community, disciple-making, and outreach? That's the future we want to build. When all those things, it's not the one-legged dog. It's the four-legged dog. And so you have the whole thing going on. And then when you get down to the how, I tried to pick out just a few things. There were many, many things, but I, <clears throat> these are the ones that just came top of mind. Intentionality. It doesn't just happen because you want it to happen, because it would be a good thing to happen, because God wants it to happen. Somehow, you have to be intentional and actually do something. Culture. We had a lot of talk on culture. This is something that I'm pretty familiar with after living in another country for years. And just be, we tend, we don't really realize the way we think and the way we act. We think everybody thinks that way, but that's part of our culture. So going, dealing with culture, it can be done, but you can't ignore it because it'll come back to bite you. Fasting and prayer came up, these things, very necessary to have this whole atmosphere of fasting and prayer. A lot of really great pr <clears throat> principles. You know, Chris and I were talking about this, just like in engineering, there are principles. You count on them, they work every time, whether you believe them or don't believe them, they work. And it's the same with these kind of principles, and I won't read them all, but they're really great principles we're going through here, and they work. So I'm a big fan of principles, it keeps it simple. Process, as I mentioned before, this is something that uh, Dave also brought up, revelation, obedience, transformation. It, it, again, it's a process. And if you, can, if you can create a process, you can do it consistently every time. If it doesn't work, you can fix it. If you have a process, you can roll it out, you can replicate it, you can teach it, you can pass it on many generations. This is the very basis of Japanese manufacturing that I was really pounded into me over the years. Uh, focus, I like this one on, on those in whose ears, whoops, your words are big. I'll get it. Yeah, something like that, <laughs> okay. And then on fast people, faithful, available, servant-hearted, and teachable, I thought that was really fantastic. Not on everybody, 
but on those who are fast. And then we got on here to strategy. I just, again, some things just to say, you know, vision is not strategy. I said this morning, I work with visionaries. It's the weirdest thing. Once they can see it in the spirit, they think it's done. And why do you have to explain it? Why do you have to do anything? Because God already showed me. So vision is not strategy. Action is not strategy because you have to have strategy first before you have action or you're just basically going from a for a random walk and then taking culture into account. So these are just some very high level things I pulled out. And then on the implement side, I thought I'd throw a few more things in on the end. If we go to this other picture here. This really helped me when I first uh, got into this sort of thinking. There's the current state, which is where you are. There's the desire state, which is where you want to go. And there are certain things that will push you and drive you and help you get to the future state. And there are certain things that hold you back. And over the years, you know, I happened to work with a guy that uh, met him, didn't work with him, that helped plan the Gulf War with Schwarzkopf. And he said what they did to detoxify the war plan, instead of figuring everything they could do to make the forces stronger, they looked at everything that would cause them to fail. And they ordered it and put it in order, and they started knocking out the things that would cause them to fail, which is much more efficient, much faster, much less use of equipment and resources than the other way around. So I found over the years, the best way is to, once you know where you are, where you want to go, and start laying out the things that could hold you back, usually the drivers are there because they're usually something good. You have a desire for that, you see the need for that, you see principles for that, you see hope in that. But if you can find the resistors, some of them you can't do anything about. Like if you're designing an airplane, you can't do anything about gravity. It's just there, so don't take your time worrying about it. But you start going down the things you can do something about and work your way down the list. And normally then that will shift you to the future state. So current state, where are we? Future state, where we want to go. Look at the forces, create a plan. And then the last thing again is repeat. Go back, did I get it right? Am I going to do it over again? And uh, circle back around. So again, it's very high level, fantastic teaching today. I'll put together a file and send it out, and hopefully, hopefully, it'll be of some use to you. So that's it. Thank you.